Thank you all for coming. Good to see you. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but we've got uh, the youngest governor in America, Sarah Sanders, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and uh, the first woman governor in Arkansas, and the very first father, daughter, ever to be governor of a state is going to give our State of the Union response. And we're excited about it, especially what she's been able to achieve so far uh, as governor in Arkansas. So I'm very excited by that. We'll also have Juan Siscomani giving a response in um, Spanish as well. As many of you know, Juan's uh, story, immigrating to America, age 11. His father drove the bus in Tucson, Arizona. Um, just a real true American story as well. Um, Yesterday I had a meeting with the president. I got to see a pre the president again this morning. Uh, I was like to, that he said it was a good meeting as well to me. Um, no predetermined ideas, but we're going to meet again about the debt ceiling and ways that we can find uh, ways for savings and put ourselves on a path to um, balance. I think that's very important. If you look any of the latest polls, 74% of Americans believe there has to be some savings in what we're spending. We're at 120 percent of GDP, meaning our debt is larger than our economy. It's one of the greatest threats we have to this nation. Um, and when I look at it, if you look at just the last 12 years in Congress, Republicans controlled eight years of that and Democrats controlled four. In the last four years that the Democrats controlled, they increased discretionary spending by 30 percent, more than 400 billion. Now we had controlled it for twice as long. Discretionary spending during those eight years didn't go up one dollar. They actually went down 10 billion. So I know we can find savings and get our economy stronger. After, um, when Republicans were the majority, we were able to pass that tax package. Revenue into the government has never been higher. It's the highest revenue we've ever seen in. So it's not a revenue problem, it's a spending problem. So we'll continue to work on that. A couple interesting things happen on the floor right now. You had almost, if you combine the number of Democrats who voted no and voted present, there's 100 Democrats that won't stand up against socialism. That's a real concern to me in America today. It's not just, that wasn't a college vote on a college campus. That was a vote in the U.S. Congress that 100 Democrats couldn't say socialism was wrong. That's a scary point of view, but you also understand why we're in a spending problem that they are when they were in the majority. That's why you understand the challenges that we have here. So let me stop there and take any questions you might have. Yes, sir. When you, the White House said that the president's open to a talking about the debt ceiling and a separate discussion about ways to control spending. I mean, do you, what do you think about when you hear that, that they kind of want to separate those two? Is what they say. Which, whichever way they want to talk about it, I, I'm very clear. We will not pass a clean debt ceiling here without some form of spending reform. So there'll never be a clean one. I don't know how they want to say it. That's fine. But at the end of the day, we're going to get spending reforms. I, I believe you have to lift the debt ceiling. But you do not lift the debt ceiling without changing your behavior. So it's got to be both. In front. Yes, sir. Some of your own members who voted for this Omar resolution, like Congressman Mays and Congressman, Congressman Gonzalez, are concerned of what they see as sort of like tit for tat retribution that your new majority is taking against a Democratic member of the House. Is this the message you want to send to voters as you come into power here? No, and th that's the clear part how it's not tit for tat. So, so let's just put it in perspective of what the Democrats did and what Republicans are doing. So the Democrats in the last Congress removed Republican members from all committees. They even judged one Republican member not based upon what she had said as a member of Congress, but what she said prior to ever getting here. And she, they removed from all committees. I'm not removing people from all committees. And I'm not judging something that someone said when they're not a member of Congress. Now, the first two people we did not allow to be on intel. If you got the briefing I got from the FBI, and I know you all personally believe it as well, simply as an American, you know Swalwell should not serve on the intel. I'd love to take a hand, so, show of hands here. How many believe, if you're a member of Congress, and the FBI says nothing, but the moment your leadership appoints you to the intel committee, the FBI comes knocking on the leadership's door and says, we have a problem, this person has a relationship with a Chinese spy. How many believe that that person should stay on intel? So, yes, it's not the same, and he's no longer on Intel. But there are a number of other Democrats concerned. Now, the chairman of the Intel Committee, Adam Schiff, I actually believe I helped him. 
Because what he did to the Intel Committee, he used that position as chairman, knowing classified information that others didn't, and he conveyed to the American public something that was not true to try to confuse him on a number of times. From the whistleblower, even the Washington Post acknowledged that that is true. What he did when he went after um, Devin Nunes, even the Inspector General said he was lying about that. He turned the Intel Committee into an impeachment committee. So now Schiff serves on judiciary. That is actually the committee for impeachment. That is where he should serve. So now the Intel Committee would go back to the responsibility that it has to protect the American public. Now when it comes to Congresswoman Omar, based upon what she had said, the anti-Semitic comments, it's all about the Benjamins. The, the military in America is equal to Hamas and the Taliban. On 9-11, something happened that day. Even the former Democratic chair of the committee believed her comments were wrong. When a um, resolution was brought up to deal with this last time, she never apologized. They changed the resolution to say anti-Semitism is wrong. We're not removing her from other committees. We just do not believe when it comes to foreign affairs, especially the responsibility of that position around the world with the comments that you make she shouldn't serve there. But this is what the clear, this, if it was tit for tat, we would have picked people, took them off all committees and said nothing about it. We don't believe in that. I just had a conversation with the minority leader, Hakeem Jeffries. What I asked him to do was to select a couple members, uh, along with himself and mine, and I have a couple members, and one's gonna be Nancy Mace to help and Ken Buck and some others. And I think what we should do is put into the rules. That there is a code of conduct here, but I don't know the definition exactly what all that's going to mean. I think that should be clear. So if there is a concern, it's not tit for tat. But I think in moving forward, every single member of Congress has a responsibility to how they carry themselves. And to, let me finish the question. And it's responsible upon us to let them know what that is. And then what is the due process in a bipartisan way that we can deal with it. So I'm going to put a group of Democrats that Hakeem will select, and a group of Republicans, and we'll work to come and clarify the rules and pass something for not only this Congress, but future Congresses as well. There's an acrimony right now in Congress. We've seen it play out in many of these committee hearings where members are calling each other names. This vote with Congresswoman Omar as a backdrop against this. With the acrimony between Republicans and Democrats right now, how can the American people be confident that you'll be able to get things done? Because this is nothing like the last Congress where you move somebody from all committees. This is nothing like the last Congress where you have a speaker that tells Republicans they can't even be on committees. This is nothing like the last Congress where they would deny the, the rights for, for bills to even go through committee. This is nothing like the last Congress where you never had an open rule. So let's just judge the few weeks we've had now to the last Congress. This is the first time in seven years any bill has come to the floor in an open rule. Almost a decade since that has come to the, a bill has come to the floor that's not an appropriation bill. Look at what we've also done the first week in a bipartisan way. 146 Democrats joined with us where we opened a select committee on China. This is actually a fundamentally different Congress. I've had Democrats coming up to me telling me we're running it much better, especially the time allotment. They like the openness and the working. I'll give you another example for an inner workings, right? Um, there's times that I was going to be given a briefing. I call up the minority leader, take the briefing with me. Because there's ways that I look at the way we were treated in the past I don't think was right. And I'm glad you asked this question because this is a much different Congress, much more. Now the public can actually be here. You can be here. Which, how different is that? The public is going to be back in the people's house. We're going to have a state of the union where the public can actually watch it. So yeah, I'm really excited how this is so different than the last time. I'm really picking one side. Yeah, that's all. Let me come back to you. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that's unfair. I was really going. On Hunter Biden yes. and uh, his calls for a federal investigation now into the dissemination, dissemination of the laptop, how is that going to impact your own investigations in him? Uh, I don't think anyway. I think it's delayed in its tactic. I think it's an, an attorney tactic to try to stop something. Um, the one thing I will say from that, He's acknowledging now it is his laptop. Um, so he was a little slower than, than the rest of the papers and Twitter and the others, but now we know that it's true. Um, 
And I think the investigations here, the uniqueness is you'll have Republicans and Democrats, and we'll get to the bottom of all that. follow up. Yes. On, on, on Secretary Mayorkas, there's obviously now um, people calling for um, articles of impeachment. What about a timeline? When can we see an inquiry happen? Well, listen, we, we, we will never use impeachment for political reasons. It's just not going to happen. That doesn't mean if something rises to the level of impeachment, we would not do it. So what you're finding now, committees have just now been organized. Um, I said early on, um, going down to the border a number of times. Fortunately, the president finally went down the border after 40-some years. Um, we can't sustain what's happening. Every community now is a border community. We're watching fentanyl. In my own community, a cartel came in and killed six people. A young baby shot in the head. The fentanyl that is, is just decimating the most productive years of Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. Um, so what you'll find is, in the last month, even though we said we were going to have an inquiry, in December we hit the highest number we've ever hit. So what you'll find is the committees are together, they'll start the inquiry and let it go wherever it takes them. Do you think we have the conference, the, the confidence of the conference to move forward with an inquiry? Oh, yeah. I, I think Democrats will join with us, too. Nobody wants to see the border the way it is today. Hey, we'll go back here. Um, I just want to get you to uh, comment on some of the things that uh, Leader Jeffrey said. He had a press okay. conference before you. He had these posters up of some of the words that members of your conference have said in the past. So can you just respond to some Democrats who... I, was, I wasn't at the press conference, so can you tell me an example? Yeah, well, I'm just saying, he, for example, he had comments from Marjorie Taylor Greene. Up. Is she on foreign affairs? No, no. I'm is she on intel? Okay, I make my case. Okay. Next question. You've been talking about the meeting with the president again following these discussions. Do you have a timeline for your next meeting with him? And realistically, what are the next steps? Are you going to bring some members perhaps to meet with him at the White House? Are you bringing some Democrats as well? And what's the next step in the process? Okay, the next step is very clear. Uh, we left it that he'll give me a call in a couple days to set up the next meeting. Not who would come, not any of that. Today, I got to see him at the prayer conference, uh, prayer breakfast. He sat next to me and he said, very good, very good meeting. I thought his comments up at the prayer breakfast, that we're going to treat people with respect, and he followed to me. And I, I have respect for the president, and I, and I want to be very responsible with how we deal with it. I was very clear with the president. We should not wait five months. Let's not put America through turmoil, right? I mean, I looked at the latest polling. The greatest fear people have is government. They want their government to actually work. We have a government that's designed. We have a government that the American public decided to have a check and balance, where Republicans in charge of the House, Democrats in the Senate, he has the presidency. So I believe the most sensible way to do this is we sit down together and we start talking. Yesterday, I know before he said he wouldn't negotiate, but yesterday was a very nice conversation for more than an hour. It didn't mean we agreed, but we, we staked out different positions. And I think at the end of the conversation between both of us, we thought, you know what? This is worthwhile to continue. We're going to continue it. So you're going to have another meeting. Yeah. Yeah. He's, got, he's got to come back to me. With regard yeah. to the classified documents, we've seen pressure in the Senate right now, threats to the Biden administration in order to get that briefing uh, specifically from Democrats and Republicans on the Senate Intel Committee. Does the House have its own plans to apply pressure on the Biden administration in order to get the briefing that Congress is, is yeah. required? Yeah. I mean, this is, take away the what we're talking about, but the House and Senate have a constitutional right to oversee this. These agencies do not have a right to withhold information to members of Congress and especially in the Intel Committee. So you will see members inside the House Intelligence Committee to join with the senators as well. Um, it's just purely the jurisdiction of Congress. On immigration, on immigration, what's going to happen with Chip Roy's ball on H.R. 29? Uh, Tony Gonzalez has spoken out against it over language about asylum. How do Republicans plan to Look, it, the, when we deal with immigration, the, a lot of members have a lot of different positions. Both of those members from Texas have a lot to say. Tony represents almost two-thirds of all the border. He has a lot of great input in there. Whatever comes through is going to come through committee. And I know members are working together to try to find a place to get there. So I think at the end of the day, we'll try to find out what the very best policy. I think there'll be a number of bills, and we'll run it through the floor. Speaker, 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 Speaker. Yes. Uh, when will Republicans actually put pen to paper on a spending cuts plan? And give them to you? <laughs> and give them to the president. Well, we've talked to the president many times, but I, I'm not going to negotiate this in the press. I'm no, sorry. But, uh, I'm you can, sorry. A, you can ask timeline? this many times. Details. What's the timeline, though? The, the timeline we have is he's going to call me back, and we'll get back together in a meeting.
One of the members I elevated a lot of people. You Bernard know, Hillary we we went, but we went from the minority to the majority. You know what happens when that happens? You get a lot more slots, so you got to put a lot more people on committees. But go ahead. One of the first things Marjorie Taylor Greene said from the oversight dais was that Ashley Babbitt was murdered. Mm -hmm. Do you think Ashley Babbitt was murdered, or do you think the police officer who shot her was doing his job? I think the police officer did his job. Yes. Should and are Republicans looking into police reform in the House? Are you working on that? Look, you want to be part of what happened to Tyree Nichols is appalling and just unapproachable. We want the Justice Department to work. We want justice to be given. Um, I've always believed in any situation like this, you should gather all the information. I've had a couple of conversations with Tim Scott, who's really been a lead on um, many of these cases. We've also, um, with Jim Jordan and others, and we'll make sure we get all the information back and work forward based upon it. There's yes, right. yes, sir. As speaker, you have a lot of power over the artwork that gets displayed in this building. Is that something you're thinking Well, I, I remember when the Democrats brought up removing of a couple statues. I thought they should have gone further. Because the interesting part is I think, I think they should change the name of their own party. Because when you think about it, every statue that came was voted on by a state legislature that was a Democrat majority, that was sent to Congress as a Democrat majority accepted it. There's not one Republican that you have to take down. There's not one Republican in the process. Remember how our party created our very first president was Abraham Lincoln. The greatest challenge ever to our Constitution was the Civil War. But I think if the Democrats are truthful about moving forward on what they want to remove, they should remove the name of their party as well, because that was the name that they provided and circled around and moved forward. So look, I'm very proud of you coming to my office. Joseph Rainey, first black American ever elected to Congress, he was a Republican. And I watched what the Democrats did by bringing us um, Jim Crow laws to the South, going after uh, black Americans getting elected to Congress, holding us back so, so far. So, no, if I was a Democrat, I wouldn't be proud of their legacy, I wouldn't be proud of their history, and I'd want to change it. Yes. than Omar during this vote is that there's a lack of accountability because they say that you specifically have not condemned Marjorie Taylor Greene or Paul Gosar. What is your reaction to that? They're totally wrong. I can't even believe you've asked that question. Think what you just asked what they said. That somehow there's... Every single Democrat voted to remove Marjorie Greene on something she said before she ever came to Congress. So they wanted to override what the American people in her district decided. Then they removed Gozar from every single place. And what did we see when Congress reconvened right now? Gozar and AOC sitting together having a great conversation. Now they get upset. They want to fight really hard to keep a member of their conference who had a relationship with a Chinese spy on the Intel Committee. I can't believe you defend or even ask a question. I can't believe they would even defend that. Then they want to defend Shift who lied to the American public. Then they want to defend Omar. I'm not removing her, I'm not removing any of them from all committees like they did. They cheered when they did that. We simply looked at a foreign affairs of what the rest of the world looks like, where she sat and gave anti-Semitic comments. Even people in her own party said, I bet if Elliot was here today, the former chair, he would have voted with us. She said the American military was equal to Hamas and to Taliban from a member of the foreign affairs. She said Americans only like Israel because it's all about the Benjamins. And three years later she said, I didn't know there's a trope when it comes to referring to someone who's Jewish with money. She said on 9-11, on 9-11, as a member of Congress, as an individual who's sitting on foreign affairs, something happened that day. What does that say to other people around the world? What does that say to somebody else who wants to create another 9-11 America? I'm sorry. It's not right. We were right in our action, and she can serve on other committees. But it puts America in jeopardy, and I'm not going to do that under my watch. And it's fair in the process, unlike them. Yes, sir. Last month, the State Department spoke to Ned Price, was asked about your possible 
visit to Taiwan. And, uh, I don't have anything scheduled right now. Uh, no, not, that's not my question. And, he, and so in response, he pointed to Speaker Pelosi's visit and said that the Chinese had used that as a pretext to change the normal across the Taiwan Strait, uh, obviously referring to their escalating their military activities. So my question is, if you go, are you concerned that there might be an even a greater escalation military activity in that region. Okay, let me be very clear. China's not, never going to tell me where I can and can't go. Um, but I have nothing scheduled right now to go to Taiwan. Last question. Yes, sir. Sir, a group of your colleagues took to the floor. They had a special order on DirecTV's deplatforming of news facts. And I wanted to ask you, sir, if the House would contemplate hearing You know, I had discussions with a couple members now because it's very concerning to me now. Newsmax isn't the first one, OAN as well. And I think America should be able to have a choice in the news they are able to get, a choice in being able to see it. I would hate to see that someone's being kicked off simply because they provide something conservative. So I think it is a place that we should look at, especially coming after all the things we saw happening in social media. Now what we found out that happened at Twitter when they told us, oh, it wasn't happening. It's a real concern here. It's better to bring sunlight and get all the facts to know that is someone being um, jeopardized to being on television simply because their philosophical beliefs, that should be wrong. And I think it's a place that we should look into as well. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you.